Japan will host the annual meetings of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank in October. That will be for the first time in 48 years. Just prior to the convention, the government plans to hold an international conference on disaster preparedness. The government will invite participants from 188 IMF and World Bank member nations for the meeting. The delegates will include finance ministers and central bank governors. The conference is scheduled for October 9th and 10th in the northeastern city of Sendai. It was hit hard by the earthquake and tsunami in March last year. Japanese government officials want to inform about the ongoing recovery efforts and share the country's experiences of last year's disaster with other nations. Another focus of the disaster conference will be the situation in developing countries where investments on preparedness have a low priority due to the huge costs. Debates will be held to explore how to achieve disaster preparedness and economic growth at the same time. Voters in Japan could be heading to the polls this fall. Prime Minister Yoshiko Noda says he will dissolve the diet and call a general election soon after lawmakers enact his financial reform package, which would raise the country's consumption tax. He made the decision after striking an agreement with the two major opposition parties to save the package. We have confirmed two things. Firstly, we will quickly pass the financial reform package based on the three-party agreement. And secondly, we will go to the people soon after the legislation is enacted. The Prime Minister held an evening meeting with the leaders of the Liberal Democratic Party and its partner, New Komeito. The LDP had refused to help Noda pass legislation if he didn't set an election date. Noda wouldn't do that. But he did say once the bills are enacted, he'll be ready to go to the polls. The Prime Minister and his ruling Democratic Party are trying to raise the consumption tax from 5 to 10 percent by 2015 to finance Japan's debt and aging society. They also plan to modify the social security system. He technically doesn't have to hold an election until next summer, but he had staked his political career on hiking the tax, and the opposition forced his hand with threats of no confidence and censure motions. Earlier, Newsline's Gino Tani spoke with NHK World's senior political commentator Masayo Nakajima on this issue. Tell us a little bit more about the meaning behind this agreement. Well, I think with this, Prime Minister Noda will be able to pass and enact uh, his tax hike bill and related legislation soon as scheduled with the help of the main opposition LDP and its ally New Komeito. The opposition LDP once agreed to enact the bill, but later its leaders changed their minds because Noda tried to delay calling an election so his ruling DPJ could stay in power longer. The DPJ has a low public approval rating and the main opposition LDP believes that it would be able to defeat the party if Noda calls an early election. But in the Wednesday meeting, it seems that Noda did not fully compromise with the opposition leader. He only said an election would happen soon. He didn't give an exact date, although voters could head to the polls uh, sometime this fall. As you say, the LDP uh, agreed to cooperate even as Noda didn't give in to their demands. Why was this? Well, the main opposition uh, LDP's leader, Tanigaki, had to be seen to be acting in the best interest of the country. You know, Japan is facing, Japan is in a dire situation. No shit. It carries a greater proportion of debt uh, on its books than in any other developed nation. Mm -hmm. Experts point to Greece as a warning of the need to get the nation's finances in order. Debt as a percentage of gross domestic product in Japan is higher than in any other industrialized nation. On top of that, Japan has one of the highest proportions of, of citizens older than 65. Paying for social security is putting an increasing strain on national finances. It has 
it has been a, a promise to the world to raise the consumption tax, which is relatively low among wealthy nations. For all these reasons, the main opposition, LDP, had to make compromise. And I think Prime Minister Noda saved face. And this country, Japan, would be able to avoid losing trust from international society and investors. Dr. Shuntaro Hida has been fighting against an invisible enemy for much of his life. And at 95 years old, he's still fighting. Hida survived the Hiroshima atomic bombing, and he treated about 6,000 other survivors until he retired three years ago. He spoke tirelessly about the dangers of radiation, especially internal exposure. Now, that's different from external exposure. That refers to radiation penetrating the body from the outside. It's what happened to many residents of Hiroshima and Nagasaki when the atomic bombs exploded and released extremely strong rays. Internal exposure, on the other hand, refers to the effects of absorbing radioactive particles by breathing or by ingesting contaminated food. Some experts say low doses of radiation do not pose serious health risks. But Dr. Hina and others maintain radioactive particles can destroy cells, alter DNA, and cause all sorts of illnesses. 67 years after the atomic bombings, Hida's warnings are attracting new attention. Shuntaro Hida visits this place every August 6. It's one of the memorials in Hiroshima for the victims of the atomic bombing. The experience of the atomic bomb was a special and a big issue in my life. It changed my view of life as a doctor. In 1945, Hida was serving as a Nami doctor in Hiroshima. Hida was exposed to radiation, but he still worked tirelessly treating survivors in the aftermath. He was surprised when he started seeing patients who had escaped the blast but had returned to the city days later. They were also dying of acute radiation syndrome, showing symptoms such as high fever, hair loss, and bleeding. Hida watched over the years as more survivors developed cancer and other diseases. Authorities restricted reporting of A-bomb health damage for several years after the war. So it wasn't until the 1970s that Hida realized his patients were likely suffering from internal radiation exposure. In Hiroshima, radiation killed human beings for the first time. Still now, the nature of the radiation damage cannot be understood from a medical point of view nor can it be treated. Hida dedicated his life to educating people about the long-term health damage radiation can cause. He delivered speeches around the world. Then last year's accident at Fukushima Daiichi gave him a new focus. Many people in Japan wanted to hear his message. Parents in particular they worry radiation from the damaged plant could harm their children. Yoko Hashimoto is a mother of two living in Tokyo. My children grow up with what I give them to eat, and I feel horrified about the possible effect on them. Hashimoto and a group of mothers turned to Hida so they could be better informed. Hida explained how atomic bomb victims became sick. He also criticized politicians and experts who say the radiation released by Fukushima Daiichi poses no risk. Internal radiation exposure is indeed dangerous. Once you absorb even a low dose, it will cause damage. We experience this horror many times after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 
He that told mothers that many A bomb survivors tried hard to prevent being sick by taking every measure to maintain good health. You should spend the rest of your life working together to shut down nuclear plants and abolish nuclear weapons. I will think about how not to be a victim of radiation. Dr. Hida has delivered more than 150 speeches since the Fukushima nuclear accident. There is no other surviving doctor who can speak about the damage from radiation exposure. The government and other elites say that people don't need to worry about internal exposure. But I've seen evidence to the contrary. I have to speak about it even though it's hard at times. The 95-year-old says he's committed to teaching the next generation the lessons of the past and reminding them of the dangers they face in the present. A sinister question surrounding radiation is how much damage it can pass on from parents to children. A scientist in Osaka is trying to find out. The focus of the study is children born to South Korean Hibakusha, the name for survivors of uh, the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. A group of second-generation Hibakusha is working with a team led by Taisei Nomura, Professor Emeritus of Radiology at Osaka University. They're trying to find out whether their illnesses are linked to their parents' radiation exposure. The study will also uh, the study will involve analysis of blood samples from atomic bomb survivors and their children to determine what effects of exposure have been passed on. <laughs> I hope this study will help second-generation Hibaksha gain official recognition as victims of the atomic bombings. About 10,000 second-generation Hibaksha are living in South Korea. Some claim their leukemia and arthritis are the result of their parents' exposure to radiation. The study group hopes the research will improve their lives. In Japan, the offspring of Hibaksha receive regular health checks and welfare support, but those in South Korea are not entitled to such benefits. Experts at the Japan-U.S. organization Radiation Effects Research Foundation in Hiroshima say the genetic impact of the atomic bombings has yet been determined. And there's these guys. We took them camping for fun. It's another bullshit experiment. Russian prosecutors have demanded a three-year prison sentence for members of a female rock band. The women sang a protest song against President Vladimir Putin at a church in February. The three-member band Pussy Riot was charged with hooliganism. They performed the song in a Russian Orthodox church in Moscow before the presidential election. Prosecutors said on Tuesday a loud performance at a church undermines social order and is against social norms. The defendants pleaded not guilty, saying they were simply trying to express their political opinion. The Russian Orthodox Church is close to the Putin administration and is demanding severe punishment. U.S. pop singer Madonna defended the band when she visited Russia. She said what happened to them is unfair. Human rights groups have expressed anger over the case. Anti-government protesters have been given large fines since Putin's return to the presidency in May. A new law also outlines harsh penalties for defamation of political figures. Japan's financial regulators have urged the Tokyo Stock Exchange to prevent system failures from happening again. That's after a technical glitch temporarily left traders unable to buy or sell any derivatives on Tuesday. The Financial Services Agency called on the exchange to explain the cause of the system trouble and report on measures to preventing a recurrence. On Tuesday morning, a technical problem disabled trading of various financial products. They included futures contracts for government bonds and the topic stock index. The stoppage lasted for about an hour and a half. The exchange says a data processing device broke down and a backup machine failed to take over automatically.
The board says it will need more time to identify the cause.